Alrighty YouTube, we're back at it again, building the scale flatbed trailer from Tamaya. Um, on the last video we did steps 4 and 5, on this video we'll be doing 6, 7, 8, and 9, but we're actually going to do steps 6 and 8 together, and then 7 and 9 together, because 7 and 9 both have us both steps have us working with the actual trailer portion which will make it easier for us to do if we are not start struggling with our workspace so we'll do six and eight and then seven and nine and I'm also going to do twelve which is building a shock um, I've already built the three of them I'm just going to build one so you can see how it's done and then uh, we'll go from there. So, again, covering it one more time. Six, building our release mechanism. Seven, mounting release mechanism. Right here, seven. Eight, building shock or spring pack. We built two of them. I've already built one, and I'll show you that. And then we're mounting that on the trailer, so that's why we'll do them set, uh, as an odd mix like that. So, starting out with six, the first thing they do is they have you build this rod. Comes out of metal bag, uh, metal parts bag B. Uh, they want 90 mil between these two points, between the end of both your ball links. So, I've already done that, measured it out, it's 90 mils exact. Um, our next one, we're going to take part C, uh, seven, which is this funny looking. Uh, mushroom head shaft um, it's t it's the piece that actually releases the uh, arms on your trailer so I'll show you that when we go to do the mounting phase and I'll show you how it works and everything then they want us to take a metal bag part number 11 which is this brass ball link um, just a little guy they want us to take that and insert it into the only hole here so we'll put that in, run it down until it's tight with our handy dandy little T, like so. We'll set that aside with our um, shift or our release mechanism end. Uh, we'll move to the next build part, which is uh, metal part C3 and C6. Uh, C3 is just a big uh, anchoring point, it looks like, really. C3 is a weird shaped bracket. Um, what they have you doing here is they take one of these brass bushings. Uh, there's no need to have a bearing, so no bearing rant about it. And they have you mount it into this hole right here. Oh, you can see it. That hole right there. Kind of changing color. So, you put the bearing, or the bushing in to part C6 on the top because obviously that's the only way it fits and you grab metal screw number MA1 it says it's an, a metal bag A part but it actually they are also in bag B they're just the same size as all the other parts so they kinda make sure you get it um, make sure you get enough parts obviously so that goes in through the bottom of C three, run it down nice and tight, and the big end of your wrench fits over the nut portion, and just kind of give it a couple good turns. Um, if it's still really loose, you can obviously use your screwdriver at the same time, but you don't need it too tight, but even if you tighten it up pretty good, it still got a lot of wiggle. Now, if we notice, let's see if I can get it so it shows, right? Where is it at? Right there. You see this is a hole right here and our next step is to put C1 in place which is this guy here. Um, it's a cover for this piece and a retainer it looks like. Maybe even a, a mount. There's a screw hole so it's obviously going to mount. But what they want you to do is stick this little nub on the end into that hole 
like so, and use the coarse threaded uh, screw. Uh, it's going to be metal bag B, part number 13. So you just put that in place on the top side, get it nice and tight. And then you notice that it re it locks this arm in. Yeah, you can get it to go past, but something tells me it's not supposed to go past, so just build it in here and it locks that arm in. And then the last part for this assembly is they want us to put our remaining ball link into this hole on the end of part number C6. So just run it down with your wrench and we'll be done with uh, the four steps, five steps in part number six on the build. So we'll set that aside and we grab part C4 and we get two parts um, B2 there's two of them. They look like that guy there. When you're building it, they want the two parts to be facing into each other like this. So that when your little release mechanism pushes, they spread out and touch something. So we don't know what they're touching yet, but I'm, I can almost guarantee you it's going to be the leg release mechanisms because it just says support leg crank is part six so run that down and the two front screw holes on part number C4 so part number C4 has this hole, this hole, this hole here and another little one here so your screws go into the first part. So and make sure you're not too far back because it got jammed, as you saw, and I had to kind of pop it loose. So another brass bushing spacer up through the bottom to line up with this hole. Into here. Get your last screw again, it's uh, MA1, which again tells you it's out of bag metal bag A. That's part number one in metal bag A, but they give it to you in metal bag B too. So there we go. So now you got these two floppy hands, and you're done with that one. Now we're going to skip, like I said, 7, and we're going to jump to 8. 8, we're going to have to bust open metal bag C. Uh, that's where all you'll find all your metal parts for this assembly. So, you're starting with your spring facing down, and you're grabbing these two parts from... Parts tree B. So, we're going to grab those two parts from parts tree B. The bigger of the two goes on top. And you'll notice that there's a little nubs here, right here. That's where your spring sits in between. This one also has them, right here, right here. So, we mush them down like so over that the rivet that's in this setup so just like that you get your two U joint or your U bolts they go through like this so you're gonna have an assembly that looks like this wow the lighting's really bad I apologize and then you get your last metal bag part um, what part is that? they don't say they just call it a spring seat. And that just goes on between the U bolts. And you put your four nuts on. So that covers all of that. All of step eight right there. It's those five pieces, six pieces. So 
Run those down tight. Oh wait, no, I lied. There's two more parts we have to do. So, run those down tight. I like to do them a little at a time. That way everything sits flush and straight and true. Um, it gives you the best opportunity to get everything together evenly. So you notice I'm just giving it like a quarter turn each time until it's tight and there's good resistance on the screw or on the nut like so. Alrighty, now we get these guys. They're just triangles with a hole in them or two holes in them. They go on the end of your spring through this hole here using See, I had them set aside. Where'd they go? Apparently, I did set them aside. All right. Okay. Using two of these screws that have a shoulder on them. So, it doesn't matter which one's which or how you put them on because you see they flop all the way around. Just make sure your screw heads are both on the same side. So when you're building it, your screw heads face the same. That way the nuts are on the same side and you can make it look uniform and clean. So you do that and you put two of the nylock nuts on. On both sides. Like so. We'll just run these down. Like so. And again, we'll grab this one. Like so. Now with the shoulders, you just run those down until they don't turn anymore and you've bottomed down on the shoulder but it still gives you a lots of play in the the links so that way there's plenty of movement as you see they just flop around no matter how tight you get it it stops the shoulder stops it so that's step eight we'll set that aside and we will start step nine no let's actually let's go to Step 12, and build our shock real quick. So your shock is going to be consisting of this aluminum tube, this screw from Metal Bag C, and see it's got a shoulder on it again. That drops in and goes through, and then you got a spring that goes on top. Barely make that out the spring, but we'll wait on that because you're going to pull off of part tree B. You're going to pull this little shock base, this guy here. You're going to pull that off, and it goes on the bottom of your screw for this guy. Now, you're probably going to need a pair of pliers, which I have, handy dandy pliers. Gently grab it, don't squish it too tight because you don't want to damage it. And just run that down until it stops. If you run them all down until they stop, they should be relatively uniform in length. No guarantee on that, but relatively uniform. So. You can see we got that built. We take our spring and drop it in the hole like that. And then we take our cap and put it on like that. And just hand tight. And there's your shock, your dampener, um, whatever you want to call it. They call it a dampener. Seems more like a shock absorber to me. So. We've done that. Now we're going to go ahead and do 
like I was saying, um, seven and eight together. So, alrighty. You can see I already did half of eight because there's two springs obviously per side. So we'll just set that down. Um, use two of these screws. They're calling them MA2s. They're uh, but they come out of bag C. Even though they say they're MA2s, they still come out of bag C. Um, you can see maybe if the lighting wasn't so bad. You got three holes here. And you got this plate with three holes. They just line up together and they go on the outside. So, we got that on the other side first. So, let me go ahead and just do that. You put your two short screws on the outside edge, and then they get two of the lock nuts. That's the big that's the big nut like this with the the uh they've got a teeth. Let's see if we can get a picture of the teeth. See the teeth, they give it a little bit of a bite. So we'll do that on both sides. Here and here. And don't run them tight because you've still got one more you've got to put on. And that goes through the center of this guy. Okay? Now, this guy has this uh, aluminum or steel spacer sleeve that goes through on the outside. So this edge is on the outside. And then you get this long screw, metal bag B5, uh, but it does come out of C, so just be aware. That these kits are universal, they, they use the metal bag parts for everything. So, that goes through the third hole. Right here, you can see right here, it goes through the third, the middle hole, the third one we didn't put anything in yet. So, put a lock nut on that. And that's why we waited on tightening everything down, because it'll make the, the plate's got a little bit of shift in it still. So, we don't want to tighten it and bind it up so we can't put we can't put them on. So, but there's part nine all done except for we need to put our block for our tire stops up front. And that comes off of parts D. Let me clean it up real quick and I'll show you what she looks like. So, it's just this guy, little half triangle guy. Um, that goes right here. You can see I've put the other one on already. So that goes right here, and that's going to use uh, M2s. So the short guys here, they're uh, MA2, but they do come out of the parts bag C. And you got to make sure that. You gotta remember our trailer's upside down, so you gotta make sure these go on upside down, so that way when you put the wheel stops in them, they're right side up. So and those just get your your lock nut on, not the nylock, but the one with the teeth. If I get it to start. Maybe. One one down, and the other one down. Tighten them down, and with these lock nuts, like I said, they're pretty cool because you don't have to, um, you don't have to put your wrench on it because those nuts bite into the aluminum and give it a nice tight hold. So we'll just spin this around, and we'll do part seven with it facing us. Um, part 7 looks like we're going to use some 
long screws. They're the uh, MB6 and MB5. I've got. Oh, I'm grabbing the wrong ones. So. So we're going to put this guy, the big funky one we built earlier, is going to go right alongside here, like so. We use our long screw out of parts bag B because step 7 is still using parts bag B. So we use that, put the long screw here. This is the only long screw in the one that it's going to get. So you put your long screw here. What the? Okay, so yeah. I was a little lost for a second there. So we put our long screw here, and I'll cinch it up but not tight because we got another screws going in um, metal bag B also has this one coarse screw which is calling itself MB12 metal bag B part number 12 that goes in the center hole I'll show you so you remember that center hole we pointed out earlier in our other video? That goes in there, and it's just a coarse thread, so it's biting into the plastic that's under there. But we don't want to again. We don't want to tighten that up because we need to be able to move this plate. So we get our last screw. It goes in this back corner over here. Flip it over again. Put our lock nut on the other side, and now we tighten everything up. So, those were the long screw, it's a 25 mil long, it's pretty long, uh, up front, and then we used a uh, 18 mil screw to do the back one, and the coarse thread screw to do this middle one. Now, notice that this part is now in here, and what happens is when you back your truck in, it hits this piece, which moves this piece, which is going to move our piece down here. Um, that piece is going to be this guy, and it's going to sit something like this. Get some light in there. I need better lighting. I'll do better lighting next time, guys. I'm sorry. So something like that. With our little mushroom head guy underneath. So it's going to sit like this. Just like that. So wham, bam. And that's going to take our last two screws from parts bag B. So we just put those in, make sure your arm is in the right spot, mine's clearly not, need the arms in the middle. Get everything lined back up. So, you can see. Gosh, this is a uh, kind of kicking my butt. So just like everybody else, I struggle. So there you go. That's how we're gonna end up. Something like that. You see how the arms here are grabbing these two arms, and we got this little mushroom head guy here. So when we push. You see how they both come in? 
those arms open up. So we put those two screws in, put our two last lock nuts on the back side. Holy cow, this is a long video, I'm sorry. Um, I thought we'd do these steps a little quicker. My bad. So we put our last two lock nuts on, run them down tight. Like so. And voila. That's it. All you have to do now is snap the ball link end onto each other eventually. Maybe. How? Wow, that's a tight one. I think I'm going to grab my pliers for this guy up here. Well, anyway, I'll fight that on my own time. That just attaches here, and when you back your truck in, it opens those legs. So, there you go, guys. Um, I'm going to fight with that on my own time, so I don't hog up any more of your guys' time. Um, like normal, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you like what you're, uh, you're seeing and what I'm doing. Uh, Speedy Mix, signing off.